Hey all you whiskey lovers, today we're going to talk about how bread and pharmaceutical production methods help to make better whiskey. So grab your glass and let's dive in. Now what I was alluding to is the sour mash or the sour method. Um, this can mean different things. And if you think about it, you've probably already heard the term in multiple different places. Just don't know exactly what it means, where it came from, and how does it actually, or does it even make a difference? So let's get into it. Firstly, with whiskey. It is well documented and well known that Dr. James C. Crow, yes, the same Crow that worked at and was a distiller at 1776, came up with the let's say sour mashing method. He's actually a Scotsman who is a, a certified chemist, again, pharmaceutical medicine, we'll get to it in a second, who started to use the sour mashing method to be able to produce more consistent and higher quality whiskeys. This is the sour mash. Now, there's different ways that you can kind of think of the sour mashing process and there's different things it did to whiskey. So without going into too much detail, there's kind of three ways to sour mash uh, a whiskey. One way is to take your grain after your fermentation is fer finished. So you have your grain bucket, your silo, whatever. Um, you've ground up the grains, you've added water, you've boiled it, you've extracted all the sugars, you've added your yeast. And now, before taking and pouring the entire let's, volume, however many liters or gallons you have into your still to be distilled, instead what you're gonna do is take a little bit of that and add it to your next fermentation. And uh, this is one way. The second way is you're going to run your still, you're going to distill all of your whiskey, and you're gonna take a little bit of what's left at the bottom, at the pot of that still, and add that to your next wash. Take that and add that to your next fermentation. This is actually my preferred method. I like to take what's left at the bottom of that distillation and use that in my next run. Uh, the final way is to take a little bit of the distillation, especially the end of the distillation. What I mean by that is, as you've been running your still, what's been coming off the end here, and uh, collect a little bit more of your tails and then mix that in with your fermentation. Now there's some benefits to doing this. As I kind of mentioned before, you get a higher quality, more stable product. This means that by taking a little bit of the whiskey that was produced before and adding that to the whiskey that's gonna be produced next, you are standardizing the flavors that's gonna be coming out of the end product. So you're ensuring in a way that batch after batch, it's gonna taste the same. I mean, you take a whiskey like this, or another very famous sour mash, American whiskey is of course Jack Daniels. No matter how much whiskey they produce, it tastes the same. You know what you're gonna get and you know what to expect. This is partly due to the sour mashing method. Now the other benefit is you can use some of this spent grain or end of your fermentation, whatever, wherever you're getting what's going to go back into the next fermentation, What's important to know is that what's left is very sour. It's actually very acidic. And this is something you can use to your advantage because if you take your spent grain, if you take your distillate and you add it to your next fermentation, you can actually use it to adjust your pH levels. This means that you don't have to add different chemicals or compounds to your fermentation to do this artificially. You can take X whiskey or 2B whiskey and do this using the same grains and the same ingredients. Uh, much more efficient. You not only do you save money, but you're not introducing something that could produce off flavors or aromas. So it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, sour mash, sour dough. I don't know if you know how to make sour dough, but uh, the process, and I'm no expert, more or less, you make your dough. And as you are letting it kind of uh, ferment, and of course it needs to ferment a little bit, you add yeast to your dough, to your flour, to your milk, to your uh, eggs. And once your, once your dough rises and it's ready, you can take a piece of it and let that continue to ferment so you don't bake it. 
And you will keep this for a period of time, sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. And you will use a little bit of this in each of your batches of grain or each of your batches of bread that you produce. And you will use a little bit of this in all the different batches of bread that you produce. Again, giving you a standard flavor and a sour aroma. This is a great example. If you had a regular bread and you've had a sourdough bread, you know right away the sourdough bread is a little bit more sour, a little bit more tangy. It's the same thing that's going on in your whiskey. It's the same concept and the same idea. Okay, this makes sense, Armand. Sourdough, sour mash. What does this have to do with pharmaceutical production? Now, it's very interesting. A couple weeks ago or months ago, who knows when you watch this video, I was actually talking to somebody who worked in pharmaceutical uh, production. And it was very interesting because we spoke for hours about fermentation and sour mashing. Because as you are producing different types of pharmaceutical drugs, what you're actually doing is trying to get certain compounds, or in some cases trying to make certain compounds, extract them, and then combine them together to make a certain type of medicine. It's kind of like alcohol if you think about it. And the more we talked about it, the more and more similar uh, we were finding it to be. As an example, their level of quality control, I mean, you hope, right, is at the highest of levels. You cannot take any risks. You cannot allow something to get contaminated or to have a bad run or a bad, in our whiskey world, distillation, but in their world, batch. So making sure that A, you're doing everything as cleanly as you can in the right processes and ensuring a stable quality product is even more important in their world in creating pharmaceuticals. And it's, it makes a lot of sense that all of this kind of came from the same place. And it makes even more sense that Dr. James C. Crow knew this from his chemistry background and as a Scotsman, brought it over to the US and started to do the same things in whiskey production. So where did sour mashing kind of come from or where did it originate? We don't know exactly. What we do know is that, uh, or what we think happened, is it probably started and originated in Egypt. That's where a lot of bread baking, a lot of use of fermentation kind of developed or came from. But what we know for sure is it was first documented actually in Switzerland around 3700 BCE. And uh, it's quite interesting because you kind of see where all of this has traveled. You had kind of sourdough in Switzerland. Then you had uh, clearly the process was being taught and maybe even being used in Scotland. That's where Dr. Crow kind of picked it up. And then it found its way over to the US in whiskeys just like this. And so many other whiskeys are following the same process and doing the same sour mashing steps and techniques. Nowadays, it's probably extremely common in almost all the whiskeys you try and you know and you love. So very interesting how from Egypt to Switzerland to Scotland and how to probably the whole world has developed, picked up these different techniques and used almost the same steps but in very different ways and very different product production. So very cool. But with that, I'll leave you to enjoy your whiskey. Cheers to you, the glass of whiskey. Maybe it's a sour mash whiskey. Maybe not. Bye now.